One of the big points that I make with my channel is that you should always design your website first in a design tool before you start going into Elementor because it allows you to make important decisions up front. One of the main videos about this topic went viral and this caused a lot of discussion. Not everybody agreed with me, so that means that the conversation isn't over yet. That's why today I am outside here in the city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands to go to a very cool product design agency to ask them this exact same question. I know the owners of the agency personally because I graduated from design school with them in the same year. So let's find out if they agree with me. Should you really design every website first in a design tool? Is it also relevant for smaller projects where there is not a lot of budget? Can designing a website actually help you to get better clients? Or does it slow down your whole process? Let's go inside and find out. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, my name is Reno and I run this channel called Living With Pixels, where I try to help people start and build their web design business. Today, I am talking with Jasper. Jasper is the co-owner of the agency named Straxat. Jasper and Bart started this agency a few years ago and they told me that their goal was to make beautiful products while helping their clients get closer to their goals. They take this very seriously and that's why I think that they were able to build a business like this. Because if you give your clients what they want, they will give you what you want. This is their office, but today it's almost empty because of the pandemic. Their team, which is already 8 people strong, mostly work from home right now and do their meetings via Zoom. So now that you know a little bit about their business and their vision, let's interview the owner Jasper and pick his brain on how they handle the design process. Okay, so hey Jasper, uh, thanks for coming to the show. Uh, you guys have a lot of experience with the design process. So my first question is, do you always make a design first before you start building with every project? Yes, yes we do. And the reason for that is that well, when you start developing uh, straight away, yeah, often you miss the target of the client. Uh, you don't really know what he needs or what he wants. And then you deliver it. Uh, and it's not good enough for the client. So you have to start over. And that costs a lot of money. That costs a lot of money indeed. Yeah. And a lot of time actually for you guys and frustration maybe also. Yeah, and often there is no time and there's no uh, budget. So mm. that's a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, what you're actually saying that the main point why you make a design first is because you, at, at, at the beginning, you don't know what the client wants. Exactly. And, and let's say that you do know what the client wants and you start building directly. Um, yes, yeah, still, we start with the design uh, still because um, yeah, in the design is, is uh, much more quicker to show something to a client, get feedback on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and get his response and get uh, yeah, do changes if needed. Yeah, so, so making changes in a design tool, you say is much faster than when the website is developed already. Yes, yes, indeed. And that has to do with technical things, right? Yeah, so uh, of course, when you just designing, it's just what you see. Uh, and there's not no technical function behind it yet. Yeah. So it's much more easy uh, to show it to a to client uh, what direction we're going. And he can let uh, know what his opinion is uh, about the solution we're proposing. Yeah. And if he's not okay with it, yeah, then we can come up with a different solution very easy. Okay, and then I'm gonna make it even harder. Uh, is it even important with like very simple website, like a simple static website with five pages? I know you guys do much bigger project, but let's say that you have maybe a client just needs uh, a landing page for a campaign that they do. You all, you also do the design first, right? Even then. Yeah. Okay. Has that a lot to do with the technical perspective and the speed? Or is there more? And there's always more, of course. Even in the design phase, uh, there's a lot to win if we do uh, with more sketching uh, or more brainstorming with the clients. So it's also more valuable for the client if we, uh, we design first instead of building first. Okay, can you explain that a little bit more? Why it's more valuable to the clients? Um, it's way more time efficient uh, for both the client and for our team. Okay. Um, and the, the reason for that is the feedback loops. Uh, so we often get a lot of feedback during mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. uh, and we often want more feedback uh, on the early stage. So when we do the design first, because mm -hmm. then it's very easy to shift pixels 
change the solutions a little bit. Okay. And if you get a lot of feedback uh, in the late phase of the project where we start building things, mm -hmm. then it's a lot harder to do those changes. Okay, so that's actually the, the, the main point that you're saying, like, yes, the page builders are easy to, to customize, but it's never as fast as changing an element or changing a menu in a design tool. Indeed, and clients can be very demanding uh, and often yeah. they can't really express what they need. Mm -hmm. So if you can show it to them in the design tool first, yeah, that's uh, often helpful for them as well. Okay, and do you then also show different versions of the design? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, so that's also very easy to do. You can just duplicate uh, your artboards um, and show different versions really fast. Uh, just change the color a little bit, change the position of things a little bit and show them next to each other. Yeah, I, I think that's also a great point, uh, which I oftentimes make on my YouTube channel, is that it's also not only for your client, but also for yourself, nice to see the different versions next to each other. And if you're working in WordPress, you're actually saving the new version and the old version disappears. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes yeah. you make changes and you uh, you regret it and you want to yeah. go back to the previous version or you want to compare it, what you yeah. did. Uh, I once had a client, I made 10 versions of the homepage and they actually wanted version two. <laughs> <laughs> In yeah. the end, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, so that's a time consuming process, I can imagine. Okay, so let's say that I see the value in creating a visual design first. How do you even come up with a good design? Often there are multiple steps uh, before the design phase even okay. uh, to really do that uh, well. The first step is when a client reaches out to you or you reach out to a client because often they have uh, a question or they have a specific brief or a specific idea in mind what they want for their new website. Mm -hmm. And then it's very important to, to really understand why is this client needed, uh, needing this and uh, what is the context and, uh, and what are, are the different challenges that we need to solve uh, as a creative team. Yeah, so that already gives you input for the actual visual design. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then well, what do you do when, when you know what the client wants? Uh, when we know what the client wants, then we um, yeah, start sketching. So we're not really diving into a design tool straight away. Okay. Uh, it's more like we want to do little experiments first uh, to see what works best for his case. So sometimes you actually put in effort before you even have an agreement about a budget. Yeah, sometimes that's necessary. Uh, sometimes the, the idea of client is vague or you, you don't really know what the requirements are. Mm -hmm. or you don't know how to solve that challenge best. Mm -hmm. um, so then you do some creative work first. You do some sketches or some uh, experiments with the design mm -hmm. uh, to trigger the, the client's mind. Um, oh, and, to and actually convince them. Yeah, or sometimes, um, sometimes uh, the client sees it in a different light and then he suddenly comes up with a lot more requirements uh, needed for his project. And then you can really scope the, the project um, and come up with a quotation for him. Okay, so, so it actually takes, sometimes it takes a lot of effort to convince the client. And of course, this is more relevant with bigger projects, but you're actually also saying that even with smaller projects, if the client doesn't really know what they want, sketching before you even have talked about money, it's important to make them understand what they want, but also to convince them. Yeah, exactly. And it's very important, I think, to get that mind uh, of the client and your mind on one page early in the process. Yeah. Because then um, yeah, you, you will have less time uh, wasted uh, on creating stuff for a client, uh, what, what he doesn't want in the end. Or a need. Because and need, indeed. Yeah, because with the whole development process, it's as actually the same argument as with why you create a visual design first, because you don't want to waste his money, right? Because if you build a product that he doesn't really need, he actually wastes his money. Exactly. And you guys wasted your time because you also want to create products that are good for the market, right? Exactly. And that's why we do those steps uh, before to reduce time uh, in the later process. Are you actually going so far that you're saying that if you don't design a website first, I know this is a little bit of an edgy question, but if you don't design a website first, you actually don't really care about your clients. <laughs> That's a bold thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yes, you can put it that way. Yeah, I think, well, I think you can give the client much more value for his money if you do a design uh, phase first. So it's more valuable for you and for the client. Yes, indeed. Yeah, all right. So good business. <laughs> it's good business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so I have another question, uh, and that is that uh, I learned in design school that the design process is actually much bigger than just visual design and development. Do you agree with me uh, when I say that uh, the design process starts from the moment the first phone call comes in or the first email comes in? Like, how do you see the design process? So often when the first phone call occurs, um, yeah, you already start diving into the research phase, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so you really want to dive into the client uh, business case to see what he wants, what he needs, um, to get everything on the table. Mm -hmm. And often we do uh, a follow-up meeting then to okay. get uh, even more in-depth information. Sometimes mm -hmm. we also want to talk to his customers, his clients, oh. uh, his target audience, so we get a better understanding of, okay, for who is this website. Yeah. And even then, if we have all the insights, sometimes we don't start with the visual design straight away. Okay. We do first do some sketching or mm -hmm. uh, wireframing. Okay. Um, and that's all part of the process. That's all part of the process. Yeah. Yes. All right. So you're actually saying like the design process is not just visual design and development. It starts from the moment you do research and that already can be asking the client what he wants or looking at his website, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's an important step in the process, really. Okay. That's nice to know. Okay. But isn't this a lot of risk uh, if you don't know if the client actually wants to work with you? Yes, yes, sometimes it is, but um, we are willing to take that risk because often for on our side is also an evaluation of the client. Okay. So do we really uh, have the resources to help this client? And we can only know that um, if we start uh, asking those questions. Resources or is it also do you want to work with this client? Sometimes that's also the case. Yeah. Because I can imagine that you don't build a business like this with clients that, that only have a $500 budget. No, so often uh, the first conversations you have with the client, you can really feel like, okay, what is the budget? Uh, what uh, are the requirements? Sometimes you um, you see that, that you're not the right party for the client uh, okay. to work with. So then you're honest about it. Yeah, then we're honest. Sometimes they need a whole set of different services that we don't provide. For example, marketing strategy, um, and then we uh, refer them to uh, partners of ours. Okay, so it's not actually a good goal to get as many clients as you want. It's a better goal to just work with the clients you know you can help. The, the, the best thing to do is to, uh, to pick clients uh, that you can really help uh, and that want to be helped by you. And how do you know what clients you can help if you're starting out? Well, the best way to, to do that is um, asking questions and start talking to the client in the very early stage of the process. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know your own skills and then you start asking questions and then you see if those align with your skills. Indeed. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit rough if you start designing or start developing straight away and you come to the point that uh, the you client... You can't help them. Yeah. And the more you ask uh, in the beginning, uh, yeah, the less risk uh, you're taking in the, the rest of the project. Yeah. So you're actually saying that building a business like you have built over here is less risky than trying to, to get as many clients as possible. Probably, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, that's a good point. Okay, so I think we've already learned a lot. Uh, do you have any final thoughts uh, to give to my audience? Uh, what would you advise for people that are starting out? Uh, well, I think as a designer, um, your job is to create value for clients and for users. Mm -hmm. And I think the more value you provide for clients and for users, yeah, the more value you also get. Yeah. So be less selfish and be more of value to the clients. Indeed. All right. Well, thank you very much for all of your time. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was really cool. And I think that a lot of people will get value out of this conversation. I hope so. All right. Thank you. Okay, so I hope that this video gave you some inspiration for your own web design process. I also hope that you guys like these kind of videos because they are very different from the videos that I normally make. These videos take a lot of time to make. So if you liked the video, then please let me know by giving it a like. It helps out the channel a lot and it allows me to make more creative videos like this. For now, a question for you is, do you think that this can improve your design process? Let's start a discussion inside of the comment section below. 
For now, I want to thank you for watching and the agency Straxat for making this video possible. Their Instagram and their website will be in the description below. And then I hope to see you in the next video on living with pixels.